reported to show that George W. Bush received preferential treatment during his years in the Texas Air National Guard. At the time, CBS News and this reporter fully believed the documents were genuine. Tonight, after further investigation, we can no longer vouch for their authenticity. Dan Rather's apology at the hands of bloggers. It was brought about by bloggers, and that, well, that was the time that new media became a force to be reckoned with. This entire show, we've been talking about the liberal media here in Canada and in the United States. I want to turn now to Brigitte Pellerin, Sun News reporter, who every morning monitors the blogs and other things. It, blogging was something that you did in your underwear in your mother's basement back then. <laughs> no, and, I didn't, but some Okay, you did, did it in your yes. pajamas, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it wasn't considered acceptable. Then bloggers right. proved their worth. They brought down Dan Rather. I mean, Absolutely. Dan Rather had to retire after that and mm -hmm. go quietly into that good night after years of biased reporting. Um, are they still relevant today and how relevant? I think they are still relevant. In that episode, with the, you remember uh, it was on Little Green Footballs when he had the memo, the apparently the old-time memo, and he superimposed it with a similar memo that he just created using his Microsoft Word, saying this is a forgery, this memo is wrong and false, and this led to yeah, then rather he didn't go very quietly, but he did go away. I mean, how the mighty have face planted. He is gone now, and this was brought on by a blogger, so somebody who was just in his basement. That was the first time. Right. Uh, since then, we've seen things like um, Lila James, Rose. Yes, Lila, Lila Rose, Rose from, very good. With uh, the, live action. Correct. And she's going after Planned Parenthood, which is a huge organization, an institution in the United States, getting pu uh, public funding uh, for providing all kinds of, well, if you listen to Barack Obama, all kinds of services to women, including mammograms, which is not true. But anyway, mo what they mostly do, of course, is abortions. And she went undercover and using her blog to disseminate the videos that she had created going undercover and getting uh, in those kinds of images which showed that Planned Parenthood was willing to accept donations from people who specifically wanted to make sure that black babies would be aborted. And also underage abortion. She mm -hmm. went in, she's a, she's a very young looking woman, very attractive looking woman, makes herself look like she's 13 and goes in and That's says, right. oh, my 20 year old boyfriend got me pregnant. That's supposed to be reported in the U.S. She, she got them on tape saying, don't worry, honey, we can take care of all this, which is a violation of the law. There was also the, uh, the James O'Keefe, the famous uh, going in and posing as a pimp to take down Acorn. Uh, we don't really have that in Canada. We do have bloggers mm -hmm. and niche ones in this area, like Pro Woman, Pro Life, Life right. Site News. They, to, let's talk about the importance of the niche area in blogging, like mm. Pro Woman, Pro Life, run by our friend Andrew Morozik. Who, which I uh, helped start it. We should, yeah. we should also mention that just in the interest of full disclosure. Yes, you have this opportunity now if you're somebody with a keen interest in something. You have a day job doing something else, and, and but you have a keen interest in a particular topic, in this particular case uh, pro, being pro-life, and you can now use your blog to make sure that like-minded people are aware of what you're doing and have all the resources that they need to keep a conversation going. You can also use it for my my own uh, example. It's cheaper than therapy some days. It's a good way, like Facebook, sometimes it's just getting something off your chest and off you go. And sometimes you try to make people laugh because I'm early in the morning and that's a good thing. So there are all kinds of good uses for that. But I think the primary use, and this goes back to 2004, is that no longer can the legacy media or the liberal media get away with falsehood in the public square. Now you have an army of fact checkers out there that are volunteer fact checkers and sure some of the obviously everybody's biased but the fact that you have liberal bloggers, libertarian bloggers, conservative bloggers, pro-life bloggers, pro-choice etc etc they they check each other out all the time and they fact check each other all the time and so what you have coming up towards the surface is the truth coming towards sunlight and this is a very good thing. All right we've uh, we deal a lot with what are essentially blogs on byline we've always got guests on from Breitbart.com mm -hmm. or The Blaze, mm -hmm. and uh, they're somewhere between a, a regular news organization and a new media. They're both new media outfits, but uh, I think that those are important going forward, and I think the Sun News website operates in a similar vein. But for breaking stories in Canada, uh, I think that one of the best, we've got people like Kathy Shada with Five mm -hmm. Feet of Fury, and we've got Small Dead Animals, two of the bigger conservative ones, but a, a blog that consistently breaks stories in the area of education is... Blazing, Blazing Cat Fur. Absolutely. This, this is the guy that broke the Musketeeria story mm -hmm. in the Toronto District School Board, the crazy sex ed, the veggie sex. <laughs> no. um, I, we I, have I to remember the veggie sex ed, yes. I, I can't believe that this guy made me talk about veggie sex on air, but he's the one 
that broke it, found the, these, uh, these documents online. I think we need more people Absolutely. like that out there because, again, it comes down to he has a particular interest in education and obviously people covering the, this in, in the consensus media aren't looking at these things maybe because they agree with radical sex ed Either or they don't or else, care. Or you don't have the time sometimes to go and look through all those documents. And by the way, you're lucky you got to talk about veggie sex in the evening because you're in prime time. I was doing it at six <laughs> in the morning, okay? So don't come complaining to me. But yes, we had to talk about it because it was a huge story that our viewers were interested in and that Blazing Cat Fur broke. And this was nowhere near the first story that Blazing Cat Fur had broken that certainly we at the Sun News Network had been covering. And these guys are out there doing this kind of work and he's not the only one. There's lots of those guys out there doing this kind of work that yes, they, th those stories surface in the larger media, more established media because they are true and because you know why would we not look at those stories when they're brought to our attention no matter where the source is no matter who that person is no matter what kind of pajamas they wear when they type <laughs>